This is an aerial view of the new airport in Senegal due to open on December the 7th in Dias, about 45 kilometers from the capital Dakar and just 20 kilometers from the country's third largest city, Thies, to the north. The Blaise Diane International Airport, AIBD, when it goes into operation, will replace the old Senghor Airport in the heart of Dakar. Senghor is tightly encircled by an ever-growing city of more than 15 million people. At a cost of 575 million euros, the new airport, located in the middle of a field, took 10 years to build. The airport is said to have the capacity to deal with 3 million passengers per year, double that of Senghor, and that there is room for expansion to increase that to 10 million in phase 2 and 20 million by 2025. Today, airports are conceived in a straight line to ease the flow and to allow for the efficient management of the flow whilst taking account of commercial spaces. So today, all the feedback we've received from non-expert visitors has been that it's amongst the biggest and most beautiful airports in Africa. I think you must have noticed it. The infrastructure is modern. I think you are standing on marble. We have telescopic bridges, three radars. So today, we have modern infrastructure compared to the old infrastructure, and there are many strong points in the new airport. The airport is part of President Marky Sall's development program but is also an attempt to decentralize with the vast majority of Senegalese living in Dakar. In the IA said the country's new airline, Air Senegal, will also be inaugurated on December the 7th, although the airline's CEO, Felipe Bon, said it would not be ready to fly before the early part of 2018. Today, when you talk about the DCG, you're talking about Air France. When you talk about Morocco, you talk about RAM. That's how it is. So today, we are in what we call a battle of the hub, so as to get more passengers, and we have all the necessary elements to make up this hub. Today, the airport is finished, and as you know, Air Senegal will inaugurate the airport, and it will be the company that will tap into the hub, and we are also planning to have an airplane maintenance center, knowing that today, all companies need a maintenance base, and this base could be for heavy maintenance and for fleets and companies. AIBD is on the axis between Dakar, Fees, and Nbor. It is also closer to the coastal areas preferred of tourists. The government estimates it will create 10,000 jobs for people working in and around the airport. And that's not the only thing the Senegalese government is investing in. Air Senegal has secured a memorandum of understanding to buy two A330 Neo jets. The agreement was reached on the final day of the recently held Dubai Air Show. We have a very simple strategy for our fleets. We are going to first operate uh, some ATR, which, has, which are arriving very soon. Uh, then we will go with some narrow bodies to address uh, uh, regional uh, market and routes. And as soon as we can, and uh, we will uh, try to address intercontinental routes and uh, going for uh, acquisition of uh, wide body, and uh, notably for uh, 330 NEO. Uh, which is a very good aircraft and we want to go quite fast in our development because we are in a very competitive market. Airlines have long been a fraud business in West Africa, though there have been some success stories including Ivory Coast Air Côte d'Ivoire. Senegal revoked the air operator's certificate of Senegal Airlines after it ran up debts of more than 100 billion CFA francs in less than five years of operation. Before we go on the program, we bring you highlights from the International Civil Aviation Organization World Aviation Forum holding in the capital city of Abuja. From across the continent, aviation experts converge on Abuja for the third annual International Civil Aviation Organization World Aviation Forum. Vice President, sir, let's celebrate him. 
The Vice President of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, in his address, expresses concern on the challenges of financing aviation infrastructure, especially in Africa. The evidence is that it is difficult for aviation stakeholders and even states to access financing to build or rehabilitate airports, telecommunications equipment, meteorology infrastructure, cargo warehouses, etc. And so there is no better opportunity than this conference for a thorough engagement on the whys and wherefores, but more importantly, the practical steps that are required to ensure that African aviation is not left behind in the growth story of world aviation. The president of the International Civil Aviation Organization Council enumerates the advantages of an expanded aviation sector. This view is shared by the president of the African Development Bank. Given the state of many regional road and rail networks today in Africa, and in the increasing affordability of air travel everywhere, that an expanded and better equipped aviation sector will provide the most efficient, comprehensive, and reliable intercity and interstate transport solution for Africa in the 21st century. Air transport promotes trade, investments, and tourism, and boosts economic growth. Today, Africa's aviation industry adds $73 billion annually to the continent's GDP. With Nigeria moving up 24 places on the ease of doing business, the Minister of State for Aviation invites global aviators to invest in Nigeria. Because by its geography, Nigeria is strategically located in the Gulf of Guinea, equidistant from most locations in Africa, with a population of 173 million people, and accounts for about 50% of the West African population. <laughs> On the sidelines of the event, the International Air Transport Association, IATA, and the African Development Bank signed a memorandum of understanding to establish a framework for collaboration to boost aviation in Africa. We think that to be able to build a strong and safe infrastructure, the combination of public and private funds are absolutely key. And so the, so the who could be the, the better partner than the uh, African Development Bank, but no, no, no one. So, so thank you to have accepted to sign with us. Um, we we also strongly strongly believe that the um, that by, by bringing you know the the, um, the the public money through the bank, it crystallises the interest of, of of private money, and it, it attracts private investors, and, and so we can find the right combination in every country. We're making a statement that infrastructure in the aviation industry is very, very critical for its growth in Africa. And we also think that the various areas uh, in terms of building the right capacity within the sector, making sure there's enough safety, we can guarantee safety is very important. Also how we structure the financing uh, for infrastructure. That infrastructure can go always. It can be infrastructure for uh, the airports themselves, but the navigation facilities themselves. And we are interested at the bank of how to even look at innovative ways of financing aircraft, but within a broader context of overall uh, infrastructure financing for the aviation industry. Under the MOU, IATA and the AFDB will work in partnership to further Africa's economic and social development by helping build a safe, secure, and efficient aviation industry. Very difficult. This is our cutting call on this edition. Thanks for being there. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumbi. Okay,